to Public Speaking Online. Today we're going to be talking about persuasive speaking and going over the basics. So let's get started. The goals of persuasion can be narrowed down in very specific ways. Ultimately, the speaker, you, makes an effort to either shape, change, or reinforce a person's mind or behaviors, and oftentimes both, as they tend to go hand in hand. So let's pause there for a moment and talk about the differences between shaping, changing, and reinforcing an audience's mind or behaviors. And ask yourself, which seems easiest to do? Let's start with shape. To shape someone's mind or behavior, maybe their attitudes or opinions about a particular topic, it assumes that the audience or the person you're speaking to has little to no prior knowledge about that thing. So the potential lies in you, the speaker, to introduce that concept, topic, or issue to your audience. And you have the advantage of being potentially the first person that they have learned this information from. So the ability to shape someone's attitudes or opinions um, would actually be a little easier. So if you wanted to persuade me that I need to give money, for example, in order for us to save the North Atlantic right whale, an endangered species, it would be safe to assume, rightfully so, that I have very little knowledge of this species and would therefore accept your claim that they are in fact endangered, pending you provide evidence to support your claim. That brings us to the second one, change. Changing someone's mind or behavior is perhaps the most difficult or challenging of persuasive tasks. Think about our politicians. I can't remember the last time I woke up in the morning and thought to myself, you know, today, I think I'm just going to change my mind about what I believe. People are usually pretty stubborn and stick to their opinions and values at this point. So let's say, for example, that I only work out one time a week. Totally hypothetical, not even real. And you want to give a speech convincing me that I should probably change that routine and instead work out five times a week. Well, what types of persuasive skills or techniques would you need to employ in order to change my day-to-day -day routine? A lot. That's the answer. That seems a little bit more challenging, right, than shaping. You would have to deliver a very convincing speech to get me to change my routine. Even more challenging would be getting someone to adopt or change a belief, value, or long-held attitude about a particular topic. Reinforcing. That's the third one. And this might be the easiest of the persuasive tasks. If I'm already working out five days a week, convincing me that what I'm doing is right or good or that I should just keep doing it the way I always have, well, that doesn't seem too hard because you're reinforcing what I already think or do. Still, it's important to remember that we as a society seek out often affirming and reinforcing messages a lot of the time. These messages help us to sustain and substantiate our belief systems and day-to-day -day practices. Perhaps you've even heard of the confirmation bias. Also, when the goal is simply to reinforce an audience's belief or action, it can be assumed that they're most likely already on your side. As such, these types of audiences can really provide positive and valuable feedback to a speaker. So now let's talk about a few different argument types. The first we'll go over is an argument of fact. And when presenting an argument of fact, you are there to debate whether or not something is true or false, happened or did not, exists or does not exist. And here's an example. One of the best student speeches I've ever seen 
was from an individual who argued that humans, in fact, never landed on the moon. And they had a plethora of evidence to support their claims. The second argument type is one of value. When presenting an argument of value, you are essentially debating the rightness or wrongness of a particular issue, whether something is good, bad, worthy or not, fair or unjust, important to our lives or simply irrelevant. Here's another example from a former student. They gave a speech basically stating that no level, absolutely none, no level of dishonesty belongs in a romantic relationship, period. Now, that goes from planning a surprise party all the way to infidelity. Do you agree or disagree? The final argument type is one of policy, and this is where the speaker debates how things should or should not happen or occur, how they should proceed. And in this type of argument, really, the speaker is trying to encourage an action on behalf of their audience because they have convinced them about a law, a policy, a rule, a regulation, or a standard that potentially should be in effect and is not or should not be in effect that is. Another example from a former student. They gave a speech stating simply that drivers over the age of 70 should have to take a driving test every year in order to retain their license. Agree? Disagree? Now I want to talk for just a moment about the organization of a persuasive speech and how it differs from the main three-point informative speech that you've already given. One of the first and most commonly used formats for persuasive speech is problem solution. And please note, I'm using the term problem here really vaguely. We could, in other words, say issue. Here is where the speaker gives a detailed explanation of a current problem, whether one in society, the environment, health, education, or the like. And they provide support showing that this is in fact a problem and for who it's a problem to. Then in the second part of the speech, they recommend practical and suitable solutions, things that would help solve the problem. In the conclusion then is where the speaker makes a bold attempt to conclude with a call to action, one that is relevant and doable to, for the audience. So for example, you could ask, how should people who are caught texting when driving be punished? Or another example of a speech topic that would fit this model. Can college environments be made safer? And if so, how? The next organizational pattern that I want to share is one called cause effect solution. This one lends itself a little easier to the three point speech that we've been practicing so far. Here in main point one, the speaker talks about what caused a certain event to occur. This is the why. Next in main point two, the speaker talks about what happened, the what, that's the effect. And then lastly, the speaker talks about what can or should happen because of the problem. In other words, what we can do about it, the solution. Examples of past student speeches include the effects of pollution, the effects of plastic in our ocean, the causes and effects of the popularity of fast food restaurants, or even the internet influence on young children. Now it's time for you to brainstorm your own topic for your upcoming speech. Remember, you should select something that is debatable, something controversial, something that a reasonable person could argue for or against, and that you know there are facts, evidence, research, and testimony to both support your claims 
and the opposing side. Think first whether your goal is to change or to shape, change, or reinforce minds, actions, or both. And don't forget, no matter which you choose, you should have a call to action somewhere in the speech. This most often shows up in your final point or conclusion. Then lastly, think about whether or not you're giving an argument of fact, value, or policy, and how that best fits into the formats that we've gone over today. Feel free to start writing down as many ideas as you can and to share those with peers, family, or myself. Thank you.